Hi, sir. Uh, welcome to Red Team Security Summit 2020, sir. Thank you. Thank you very much. Hi, sir. Uh, so, sir, you can start uh, sharing your screen, sir. We can start, uh, get started with the session. Okay, I'm good to go. Yes, sir, you're good to go. We can see you as well as hear you well. All right. Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, because we are sitting all over the world, so uh, what, you know, salutation, I don't know. So it's a good morning, good afternoon, and good evening. Thank you very much, uh, Red Team, for inviting me in. So basically, uh, I'm a child online protection evangelist around the world. Uh, so I travel around and uh, conduct trainings, conduct a sensitization program among the government, law enforcement, technical team, and as well as teachers, children, parents. This is what I do uh, as a social work. Uh, and uh, I do have another uh, company in Kochi, and I'm also establishing a global child online protection funding platform. So what so special with uh, child online protection and overpowering the cyber world? Overpowering the cyber world is a jargon I just created in order to uh, you know overpower the cyber world basically this if this if anything goes uh, beyond you behind you or and above you in order to uh, make sure that you control that is to overpower so uh, is 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 the cyber world lead uh, you know uh, are you are you Conducting the cyber world, are you in 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 control with the cyber world or the cyber world in control? This is the question which we we normally ask. So when it comes to the child online protection, uh, we have a uh, various issues which I will take you through. Uh, just want to tell you what happened uh, after the COVID and pre-COVID, and uh, uh, there is an organization, an UN organization called International Telecommunication Union. Uh, they, ha they have a child online protection, ITU, COP, child online protection department, and they, uh, they work uh, creating guidelines, uh, creating various uh, way of managing it, best practices around the world uh, for the government, for the parents, for the educators. They create, they have a lot of documents. You can have a look on them. So recently, in, uh, in uh, April, they have launched uh, their one of their document, and I was part of that. Uh, I was literally said, we need to scrap this document and develop a new document. Why? Because these documents never thought anything uh, that the situation today. The situation today is not the situation pre-COVID. The pre-COVID situation we used to tell the parents, you know, you need to limit your child with uh, devices. You need to keep the devices on a common place. You need to uh, go and find out what the children are doing while they are uh, online. So, so many of those kind of information we used to tell, those kind of uh, guidelines we used to tell our, our parents in order to protect children online. But post-COVID, that situation changed. We are telling our children, hey child, take my mobile phone, go and learn. Now everything is online. So while a child is chatting or playing games or doing whatever on the mobile, no parents today can go and tell them, stop doing that. Because the child will say, hey, I am, I am great studying because my whole homework I have to finish. I have a class assignment. I have a project report to finish. You know, a lot of discussion. So the pre-COVID situation or pre-COVID guidelines for child online protection has been changed. Now we need to create new way. So what is a new way? I'll tell you one situation what happened to me uh, two, yeah, two weeks back because I'm, I'm doing conducting training for parents and uh, sometimes counseling to the children also. So a, a, a father of uh, a, a, a girl called me two weeks before and he said there's a huge issue. Uh, his daughter tried to suicide. The reason was she sent a couple of her little bit compromised photo to her boyfriend and some reason this photograph has been circulated among the you know the, the social media uh, and the boy was innocent somebody took his mobile phone acted or 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 even accessed the mobile phone we have no idea but 
the photographs being stolen from the, from this mobile phone and uh, is spread on. Uh, uh, and this girl is so sh- you know uh, a bad situation. She she said she tried to suicide. So they asked me how to remove this content in the cyber world. So I said it is impossible. It is impossible today's world to remove a content which is already uh, you know circulated or it's already put it on the cyber world. It is it is not possible to remove it. The only way to overpower that situation, the overpowering that situation means the girl have to come to a situation, the girl have to come to a mental state that that I don't have any problem whether my photo is shared online or or anything happened to me I mean online space. I don't have any problem. The girl have to create, we have to create such a mental state today in order to overcome the cyber. That's the first thing. But apart from that, the police has taken into a case and police is investigating, police is trying to remove, but you know, I know it is impossible. So the only way is to overcome. I'm just want to take you through the other other problems, uh, uh, what a child facing before that, I want to talk about a little bit about our organization. We have two organizations. One is called DISC Foundation and another one is Emirates Safer Internet Society. Both actually founded by me. And now I moved from uh, UAE to India to concentrate more on DISC Foundation. So DISC Foundation is developing Internet Safety for Community Foundation. That's basically to build better internet for children uh, uh, around the world. So how we do that and what is the actual problem? So what children do online, I don't need to tell you because you are experts, you know what we all do online and that's exactly what every child do online. So what are the issues which is related to children? This is something which I want to discuss with you today. We have online predators. You know what is online predators. Online predators, uh, I want to tell you before I'm getting to the subject, the online space is basically what is, the, it's a reflection of the society. It's nothing new, it's nothing, uh, uh, what do you call, it's nothing, something come from some other world. It is the world, it is more to cyber world. So today we are on a, on a floor, on a stage, on a conference, on a summit. It is as good as we are all together. So uh, I don't see you, but you see me. Uh, only the difference is that. But it's all same like you have booth, you have a stage, you have certain amazing technology we are using. So the online space is the reflection of the real life. So what happened in the old time? The old time, the, the people sexually interested in children used to um, go to bus or to, to, to follow the children in the, in, on their route, to go to schools. So they find their own way to you know, lure, the, lure and groom the children for their sexual interest. But today, this is online space. So the same thing happening online is called online protection. You all know that. But what is empowering today for these online predators is the excess usage, availability and accountability, lack of accountability and the and the <clears throat> availability of this uh, technology for the children and the predators are risking the children. Cyberbullying and blackmailing. It is less discussed, but I will discuss it in the next slide. Scams and phishing, I don't need to tell you, you since morning you'll be you are hearing all, all about cyber phishing and scams. Cyber terrorism, that's another issue because radicalization is one of the big problems which a child as well as the youth and again the adults are facing online. Cyber terrorism is a big problem. I was discussing a couple of issues on cyber terrorism in the UN conference. And they were really, really have a problem that people are converting to, you know, certain religions, and they are going to uh, die themselves. So this kind of cyber terrorism is happening a lot. And uh, what we do to 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 uh, tackle this issue? Access to inappropriate content, definitely. Not all the content is appropriate for the children. Some contents are yes appropriate for the children but some contents are not appropriate you know, such as pornographic content violent contents and you know a lot of uh, drug contents you know available online these are not appropriate for the children again self-generated sexual content 
This is something which we are really, really facing today because the children are producing themselves their own images, their own nude images to share there with their friends, trusted friends, or their boyfriends or their girlfriends. But this becomes their you know, life killing uh, content. And also the child sexual abuse in TV. We want to discuss that in the last part of this, this uh, presentation because I need your support in order to have a global response system. For child abuse material. Of course, the next one is electronic addiction. Electronic addiction was not uh, considered as a disorder to, until 2019 or 2018. I don't exactly remember. World Health Organization has declared that. But before that, it's a hey, it's just a behavior addiction. But today, that's been considered as a mental illness, a state of mental illness, the game addiction, the phone addiction, the social media addiction. So I don't want to play game, but when the time comes, I will move to my computer and play game. That's addiction. It's not that everyone who plays the game is not addicted. Uh, or everyone who watch pornography is addicted. No, I'm not with that. But some people say, hey, I don't want to watch pornography. Intentionally and by heart, I don't want to do that. But some reason, I am I'm moved, I, I pull into this kind of uh, content that is the problem. That's how uh, we call it addiction. What is the solution? How do we respond? Uh, again, a couple of days back, one of my friends just called me and he asked me about the game addiction. He said, I don't want to take this child into a, doc a doctor because this has happened to his friend. Their children taken to a doctor for game addiction. The doctor gives some pills to, to you know, uh, suppress his uh, anxiety and his... Uh, uh, it's, it's what you call interest on game. But what happened over a period of time, the child becomes gloomy, the child could not uh, study, the child don't want to do anything, he just relax, sitting in the sofa, is doing nothing. So that type of problem is out there. There are best practices to handle this. We need to bring that into our country. We need your support on that. So what are the basically three C's risk? Contents, contact, and connect. So this is something which we have uh, uh, realized. What what makes the, the child uh, uh, vulnerable on the cyber world is the inappropriate content, inappropriate contact, inappropriate contact. So if we manage to come to a situation where uh, control or overpower the situation, I don't call it as control because there is no control. I would say uh, no one in the world today can control a child online. Probably you agree. Just put your comments, you agree or disagree. Put, put your comments on the on the screen. So I, I totally believe uh, there is no way you can control a child. The only way to teach a child to overpower the situation. Uh, you agree with that. I want to talk about the predators. The predators are, as I discussed, uh, when you are keeping access to the, uh, uh, when you are giving an access to a child, about, uh, about uh, on the internet or cyber world, you are actually giving billions of people accessing your child. So uh, that risk we have in find so far. Our our uh, my mentor actually from from Interpol used to tell me uh, is as good as you're keeping your child in a city or in a bad city or a good city, whatever the way. There are thousands of people. You're keeping your child there and you're coming out from. You, the people can come and talk to your child, people can come and touch your child. Do you do that? No. So it's same like that. When you're giving internet access to a child, we need to think about this particular point. There are quite a lot of grooming happening in, in all parts of the world. And in India, we have a lot of issues. But to be frank, our government is not taking enough, 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 you know, response to, to tackle this issue. So uh, children online, their, their parents are, are not watching. They, uh, there is no response mechanism. Children, anybody can access the children from the school, from the, from the uh, colleagues, you know, from, from the classmates, as well as anybody they know online, they can contact your child with a WhatsApp. So some people know how to tackle this. Yes, up to some extent it is safe. But when it comes to the normal people 
who the parents who have no knowledge about computer, if the, the, these children are highly vulnerable. So they are sending gifts, they are sending calling unknown numbers from their from their. Uh, sometimes they they mask the number and calling. You know how to do that, and these kind of problems are quite heavily affecting our our children. And uh, and also we have issues of you know the children online uh, when they are online the, they know how to tackle the screens quickly you know the parents when they are passing by they change the screen and these children are highly vulnerable sometimes what happen you know the grooming process they are they are teaching the children how to bypass certain levels of the games you know the, the, the games are you know there are games pubg and all those games they are bypassing this they are asking the children, they are teaching the children to how to bypass it, and they get hold of these children. Then they are asking, "Hey, send me your photo. I'll send you my photo." And they, that kind of problem. Coming back to the addiction, we have huge addiction issue. Uh, uh, I mean, I would say a good percentage of youth and adult are addicted to pornography. And uh, what again happened? The psychologists psychiatrist today is not solving or is not treating this with the international best practice they are just giving some sort of medicine sometimes they're just asking them to uh, do some meditation but the real addiction the real problem of cyber addiction is not addressed in we we are building systems to bring the international best practices like that. so again we, we are building communities to support us in order to uh, take this to the next level. I would say three A's of uh, online addiction. Anonymity, availability, and accountability. You are anonymous. Basically, when we are anonymous, you, you may feel that, hey, I am doing something, but nobody knows what I am doing. So in that way, what happens is uh, they, they, are, they are basically feel like uh, nobody is watching me, nobody is, uh, I'm not accountable, I'm not uh, seeing that. Uh, so, so basically I can do whatever I want. So this is how one reason of addiction is coming. The other one is the availability. You know, internet is everywhere today. Uh, um, the, the, the GBs and the, the high fast internet connection is, is giving easy availability so that I, I feel like whenever I want, I access it. If it's a lower speed, I remember I was accessed internet uh, in 1996. The speed was something like 10 kbps or 15 kbps. That was the speed at that time. So imagine of downloading a picture. You cannot think of downloading a movie. You cannot even think of that. So down, maximum you can do is downloading a picture. So the movie downloading and all is it's all latest thing. So uh, the, the fast internet connection is bringing uh, a lot of addiction, lack of accountability. Again, um, uh, accountability to the family, accountability to the society, accountability to yourself, your own soul uh, is something which is bringing the addiction. Because today, after the COVID situation, you have nothing to do outside. You cannot go to your parents' house. You cannot go to um, your family, other, other you know, friends' house. You you probably is not able to do anything other than online so you have no other option you uh, you have something to come uh, do online which is a lack of accountability so all these three a's basically bringing people together uh, on, on space and uh, they are addi they're addicted and the, the addiction is quite heavy look at that in the mobile phone today um, what what is the solution you know uh, you cannot leave that mobile phone aside and do your job your job is connected to mobile phone your family is connected to mobile society social social life everything today on mobile phone so we are planning to build a digital detox center uh, in in kerala uh, potentially in one of the tourist places we are planning to bring the digital detox center and i would call digital what you call reintegration center we are planning to bring into uh, uh, in this part of the world and we are be inviting you to be a part of that it's a 10 days program or even 
uh, 20 days program. So there are two type of program you're planning. So there it is not uh, the mobile phone, it is not the digital life. It is to detox your digital, uh, what you call digital toxicity. So basically what happened is there you will be uh, working on a team building programs, physical exercises, meditation, yoga, food cooking, you know, your other interests, nature, of course, COVID, uh, uh, you know, is the problem with an obstacle today, not to forward with that particular project. But after COVID, uh, sure, we will uh, start this one. Uh, we are already in discussion with a couple of uh, resources on that. So digital detox is something, maybe you will have only one hour or half an hour uh, time on your mobile phone. Uh, so you, after all, all the time, you will, you will have to work on the physical thing. You may have to talk to people, you may have to write, you have to relax, you may have to do meditation, watch, watch the movies or listen music or something like that. So uh, we are also planning to bring a concept of power of now. Today, there is no power of now. Power of now is basically to, to teach people to do, uh, uh, to concentrate on what they're doing right now. So today you are um, driving and, uh, and talking to people, uh, exercising, watching movie together, working and chatting. So we are, we are trying to teach them uh, to concentrate on power of now. If you're sitting relaxed, can anybody sit uh, today in a chair and relax for an, a half an hour, do nothing, think nothing, think about your very positive, ambitious things, uh, except, uh, you know, how can you sit in a chair, do nothing without your mobile phone? So this is a lot of people are struggling on this. So we are also planning to teach the power of now. So this is how you overpower the cyber world. Because cyber world, when you are working on the computer, you, you, you are distracted with the various things. You are distracted with, uh, uh, potentially you are distracted with, uh, 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 what do you call, uh, chat messages, uh, uh, Facebook messages. You want to know you posted a, a Facebook message yesterday. What's the status of that? You want to know all those things. So this is the distraction. So it, it, how can you keep uh, one thing at a time? So I'm going to finish my job right now, and then I come back to my other other. So this is also something which you are planning to teach. So this is only the way you overpower the internet. We call it social emotional skill development. So, so how much time we are spending with our parents, families, children, to be frank, including me, very less. We are not doing much, we are not giving much time to the, the, the quality time to our, our parents and, 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 and children. And the society, society needs us. You know, the old days, the neighbors need us. Nothing happening with that. So we need to deliberately uh, come up with that type of a uh, living style in order to overpower the cyber world. Uh, cyber bullying, as I discussed, but I just want to bring one particular point that in India, the, the cyber bullying become a huge issue. And again, the government doesn't take, take care about that. The, the other stakeholders, such as the educators, the, the teachers, the parents, uh, they have no idea what is cyberbullying. Cyberbullying is a quite big problem. A lot of suicide happen, and a lot of, lot of children is having mental trauma on cyberbullying. We are working on that to, 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 to uh, establish a anti-cyberbullying policy in, 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 in India. Last week, last uh, year, in 2019, we had a conference in Delhi only about cyberbullying. And I really shocked to see the statistics. You know, there are a lot of children. And the, the problem is no data is available in order to understand the ground reality. So empower children, the parents and the caregivers, school, the artists, digital technology companies, media providers, and the social services, they have the responsibility to empower the children. But it's happening the other way. The parents and caregivers must develop social emotional skill, as I said, the resilience program to empower your children online, which is, which is really missing today. Uh, and of course, uh, we need to 
you need to view the technology very carefully. Otherwise, what happens is the technology will overpower the child. Instead, we have to teach a child to overpower the technology. That's what uh, we need to come up. I, if you ask me, do you have a tool? No, I don't have a tool. I have a strategic approach. I have, uh, we developed a strategic approach in order to help the government, in order to help the schools, in order to help the parents to overcome. I haven't developed it myself, but it's, the, it's already available uh, as a best practices globally. You need to take and implement in, in, in the country. That's what we are doing. Right. So now I, I have, I'm totally taking it a new, new, new portion of my discussion today. Because I, I know that in front of me, a lot of cybersecurity specialists are there. Now I want, I have an appeal, I have a plea to the cybersecurity specialists. Do you know that there's a huge trend on the child sexual abuse materials online? Uh, the, the children are being abused online. How? Because they are. Their photographs, their 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 nude images being photographed, their in a sexual act being photographed and sold to the interesting uh, abusers around the world. It is a huge issue. I'll just give you a couple of uh, uh, statistics. The volume of cyber tip. Cyber tip is um, kind of an organization in in US who, who uh, under the NICMAC National Center for Missing and Exploited Children. They receive cyber tips by telephone that, hey, I found uh, child abuse materials. Child abuse materials are normally called child pornography. Um, that type of a materials online. So we need to take down. So child uh, pornographic materials are basically around the world is illegal. It is very uh, punishable by law. So we have found a lot of this kind of uh, materials around the, you know, on, on the cyberspace, particularly on a dark web, and uh, and um, social media and also the instant message like in in, in uh, what do you call uh, WhatsApp WhatsApp I would call WhatsApp is a is a dark web so because they have end to end encryption nowhere is stored and it is very difficult to track WhatsApp so WhatsApp is uh, allowing people to share the, the child abuse materials and no one in the world able to track it. So those kind of uh, telegram is another one, and they they allowing people to communicate uh, with the end to end encryption, and it's difficult for anyone to crack that. Uh, uh, so these kind of uh, reports, if they find, they basically um, inform the NICMAC National Center for Missing and Exploited Children, and they take down this content. And that taking down this content was happened. The reporting was there. 1.1 million reports in 2014 that become 4.4 million reports in 2015. And unofficially, I came to know that it is more than 10 to 20 times more after the COVID. Because in COVID days, it is huge, huge, uh, you know, digital revolution happened around the world. That way, these contents quite heavily spread around all of them. And, and 8.2 is reported in 2016. Bad news, we Indian, in India, we don't have enough reports to publish on this. We have no mechanism to tackle that. We, the government says they have a mechanism. To be frank, we don't have established best practices to tackle our children abuse online. That we are behind of that. We are pushing it, and the good thing is, Kerala government, with the help of Interpol and the other international agencies, Mr. Manoj Abraham is really good. Uh, uh, who done this particular project? Fantastic job, Kerala has done. But when I when I come to say that in Indian government uh, from the Delhi, because Kerala is a small state in cyber world, there is no state, there is no country, there is no uh, border. It's a borderless crime. So if I give you an example, uh, um, as a Singaporean citizen, I forget about uh, what country I'm mentioning, a Singaporean citizen traveled to Malaysia, sitting in Malaysia, abused a Filipino girl, okay, and they, they recorded the video, traveled back to, uh, for example, uh, Sri Lanka, sitting in Sri Lanka, he uploaded this video 
into a Pakistani web server, Pakistani web server, and using um, potentially a UAE VPN. Okay, and somebody sitting in USA using a Netherlands VPN downloaded all this. A Singaporean citizen sitting in Canada using a Netherlands VPN server downloaded this video into his his computer. So the police called. Now tell me which country's jurisdiction is applied? Where do we get arrested? Who is responsible for that? We have a big issue. This is the, this is called harmonizing the international law. We need to harmonize the law, but our government, strictly speaking, they said no. We don't want to share any information to the world for this particular issue. And they try to solve themselves. It is impossible to solve because the government is trying to take down the content, it is not possible because the website might be hosted in Gambia or, or Chad or any other country. The laws are very difficult to, uh, to in, enforce it. So those kind of problems are existing. That's why even if the Kerala government, with the help of Interpol and around the agencies, have done a fantastic work. And that's why they have, they have cracked down a lot of uh, you know, child abuse, uh, Criminals in 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 last couple of years, and uh, it is it is very difficult uh, for them to escalate or for them to um, um, take this one to the next level. Because maybe the, the man sitting in in Tamil Nadu doing this, they have to they cannot go and arrest that person. They have to go to uh, they have to communicate that through the, the channel, and it, it is very difficult task. They can only do whomever doing this act in Kerala. But somebody can sit in Kerala using a device uh, which is hosted in uh, somewhere else can do this. Job. So they, they will lose the track of it. So it's a very huge problem. We need support from you on that. I will come back on that slide. So production and distribution of child materials, you know, how this production happened. Uh, uh, this is happening uh, quite heavily with various social media sites, various uh, uh, websites. Um, even even uh, I would say Gmail is used. You know, Google drives are used to to share it. Because what happened? I I was just testing. You know, with the Google on one, one of the workshop. Google says they they have the best system. Yes, anybody upload a child abuse material to Google, they track it, they find out, and they immediately delete it. But there are ways to convert the file structure. Into the into a model, and somebody else can decrypt it, or somebody else can deconvert that into the child abuse material. So this will be a junk file. Google doesn't know what is this file. There are patterns for child abuse materials, but these patterns are not there because they change the entire file into a different pattern on a known way. And the the other guy will have the key to decrypt it. I don't call it decrypted, but it's a different methodology of managing. It is possible, and Google Drives are used for that. Google Drives are the most secure, uh, you know, uh, or, or, or child abuse material uh, is uh, taken out from the Google Drive quite uh, instantly. They, if you upload any child abuse material into Google Drive, immediately it is taken out. So this way, Google Drives, Dropbox, Box, everything uh, can be used in order to uh, upload, transfer. Uh, child abuse material. I want to tell you about the one of the production methodology called WCST, Webcam Child Sex Tourism. Webcam Child Sex Tourism is one of the big issue what was happening in Philippines. Philippines was uh, a hotspot on, I don't remember, an island. Mm. Um, I just forgot it was in my uh, tip of the tongue. But uh, um, Okay, there was an island. There is an island in the Philippines, and they are in that whole island known to for WCST. There is a project uh, uh, done by Teridas Homes, one of the NGO in Netherlands. They done a project called Sophia. Sorry, I just forget the um, name of the project. Uh, they done a project, um, Sweetie. I'm sorry, Sweetie. The project was called Sweetie. They created a computer animated girl 
and the girl was chatting with the men. And you, you just go to Google and search the reader's homes, sweetie, you will get all the information. So what happened is uh, thousands of people were connecting uh, to, to chat with this girl and uh, asking her to undress it, asking her to, you know, uh, um, ask for a live show. This was happening. So the, the police, international police, FBI and Interpol has moved to uh, the Cebu uh, uh, island in Philippines. They found every home, they have a very hi-fi uh, connection, uh, internet connection, um, broadband connection, and they have a camera setting. Some of them have a very big uh, studio setup in order to keep their own children. Parents are keeping their own children in front of the camera to undress it, to make them new. And uh, these shows are available around the world. So uh, uh, it is cracking, but it is happening here. This was a project in 2014 and 2000, 2015. What happened is I, we thought this is not going to happen in other part of the world. And I actually literally seen this was happening in one of the city in, in India. In India, we have this happening in our own city. Parents are keeping their children in front of the camera, nude, and sometimes the parents are getting into the sexual acts, and this being broadcasted around the world, and 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 uh, they are may getting paid for this. This is something which is you know very ridiculous, and uh, I cannot even imagine. It. So the global community is working on that. We need your support on that. So, so trading these kind of contents, hacking uh, uh, some, they hack into someone some some computers. Uh, and getting this information there that's selling it also police and and uh, law enforcement agencies becoming the culprits you know it's happened in one of the norwegian country one of the i don't want to mention that because it's an indian thing so one of the norwegian country there was a police officer who basically uh, in charge of keeping the sized computers uh, uh, in the police station so he, what he used to do, he used to um, copy all the child abuse materials, I will call child pornography materials, into his flash drive. Then he used to run a ring inside the police police organization. So what happened is, so he keep a, a file sharing system inside the police. They have an IP address in the police. So around the world, when the, when the police look at this, they see, hey, there are child abuse materials in this particular uh, IP address. There, there are child abuse materials happening there. So they may think this is the police organization. They might be doing that in a, a legitimate purpose. And, and this guy called. Okay. So this, these are the things that even police officers, even, even uh, sometimes teachers also involved in this. And as I said, somebody hacking, the hackers are also doing this. So it's a, another issue. I just want to tell you my uh, one of the success story, which is uh, potentially, uh, I'm so happy about that. In 2018, I pr presented a global child online protection uh, comprehensive response system to Kerala police. And there, I, I asked a question to the, to the team in front of me. Uh, I asked a question, what is the smallest child we have seen uh, abused in Kerala police? They said about four-year-old children. There are, there are nude images, there are child abuse images of four years children was available uh, in, in Kerala. It's, they say it's the police, Kerala police was size. So I post this in, in, in Facebook uh, among my group and about the story. So there's a guy called Kevin West. He is from the North Carolina police. He, he's an investigator of child abuse materials. He said newborn with drying umbilical cord still display. The youngest I have seen. A child born, they cut their umbilical cord, they rape this child, video recorded, sold online. So these are the monsters living in this world. So while I'm rapping, we need you. We need you to develop innovative, highly scalable, robust, and pervasive global 360 degree response system to support the global child online protection stakeholders. Who are the stakeholders? UN, Interpol, FBI, and all the police organizations around the world. 
are the stakeholders. We need a technical community, like hackers community, like the cybersecurity community, to find out how, what we can do together for the protection of our children. And there I am reading my note. Maybe we, if we want to have a question answer, maybe we can check into the next slide. Thank you very much for listening. If we have any questions. I think there's one question, sir. Uh, let me see. Uh, no, sir. I just saw a pop up, but I believe sorry, no I was questions. not hearing. Sorry. Okay. Can you go ahead? Uh, no, sir. I, I thought uh, there was a question and answer. I mean, in the six, there was one. But uh, I think there's no question. Sir, so, so the. Would you like to say any concluding words to our audience? Okay, so we we are not taking any questions, right? Uh, let me see the audience. Uh, guys, you can post your uh, queries in the Q and A. If you have any questions regarding to the topic, uh, uh, please uh, please feel free to put it out in the Q and A section, and uh, uh, Mr. Basar will answer you all the questions. Okay. I think I think we are done, right? Yes, sir. I think uh, there are no more questions. All right. So I will do the closing note. Sure, sir. So first of all, thank you very much, uh, the team, for inviting me to this uh, awesome session. And really, we have a wonderful um, team and wonderful uh, audience. But I'm so sorry that I probably uh, hurt this community. Um, and I, I feel like, you know, uh, you might have been uh, i mean I, I just want to tell you one thing the first day i hear about the child abuse materials happening around the world in 2012 and i see this from a child even a 14 year old boy's computer i didn't sleep on that night i really literally did not sleep on that night i was i was literally crying such a videos are you know produced rape videos crying children such a videos are produced and I, I, I was like uh, really literally gone by. I mean, I don't know how to say that. And I decided to do something in order to support the global children, support the global community, support our, you know, forthcoming generation to do something uh, for for the protection. And that's how I moved this uh, uh, this arena. Uh, it is not a happy news. It's not a very a pleasing uh, uh, discussion that the hacking and all you know we can discuss and we can make a lot of fun out of it but when it comes to the the kind of uh, dark world uh, uh, happening on the global space and the global cyberspace it's uh, it's something which you, nobody can think of it you know as i said you know how can anybody rape a, a newborn child with a drying umbilical cord which will be simple and that's that's uh, people say, hey, it's, you guys are exaggerating. No, 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 it's not happening. It is happening. Probably you might have heard that from Mr. Manoj today morning. Uh, Mr. Manoj Abram, sir, uh, you might have heard that. This is happening. It's not that uh, uh, somebody exaggerating. So so we need to um, collaborate with the red team. We need to collaborate the global community uh, uh, of, of cyber hackers and uh, ethical hackers, hands together to do something in order to protect our children. So I invite you to con be contact with uh, the red team. Let us let us put a, a strong team from here to the world to protect our children. Thank you very much. Thanks a lot again. Thank you, sir. Sir, I think there is one question which just popped up. So let me read that out yes. to you. So is there any anonymous link to report or illegal activity anonymously? So the question is from uh, Vaisha. Yes, there is. I just share you because there's a the, there's a cybercrime.in in India can uh, can you can report you can go and report it. Um, that's known to be a, a reporting center, but to be frank, I am not very convinced uh, uh, on their activities. I I can tell you the the enough best practices are not adopted. So should I go and answer that in the QA? 
yeah would be yes, yes i think it's but, but what you can do is there are couple of other uh, other agency so when i'm saying uh, there are, uh, the and uh, the issues like child related i'm only talking about child abuse related if you find some hacking is not the place for i mean india government yes that's a, so internationally they have uh, iwf internet watch foundation national center for missing and exploited children in hope foundation these are the agencies they normally take out the contents of the child abuse materials around the world but uh, in india we don't have enough uh, uh, information and enough mechanism i'm sorry you know we don't have that so uh, uh, ultimately we need to build it so that's why we need to use our power we are here to uh, we need to build something for our society our government our uh, our nation we need to support our nation so this is why we need to come up in this uh, space yeah correct sir thank you for that sir uh, so any other questions audience would you like to ask anything else uh, from mr faso i guess uh, that solved the question sir so let me also uh, thank you so much for being here so a warm thank you from the red team hacker academy for spending your time okay so we have one more question uh, why do you think our country gives less importance to these topics um i don't know but uh, uh, understanding the real core understanding of this problem is not there with the government we are trying to sensitize we are continuously trying to sensitize till now but the government somehow is not taking enough uh, you know uh, uh, what called attention to to make sure this is happening i i'll just give an example because what happened is india does not have a Uh, national policing system our policing system is completely on a state based what we have is a cbi central bureau of investigation the cbi is a, as, a, as a central bureau of investigation they are not law enforcement agency they are investigation agencies so what happen is the interpol connected to cbi and the any report comes to cbi cbi have to move that into the responsive Uh, responsible states in order to take an action you know those steps are taking a lot of time uh, uh, to to happen particularly in our bureaucratic very highly bureaucratic environment so um, the government uh, really don't know what's going on so somebody have to go and show the government somebody have to sensitize the government to understand this is the core problem happening so that's why we need to we need to push we need to sensitize Uh, uh, among the among the government yeah that's still the government doesn't understand and also every 5 years you know the government changes and their priority is not this nobody complain this is not a happening at a at a at a uh, uh, what do you call at a surface ground it all happen in a in a uh, underground you know so it's and also it's not very much reported if anything happened to my child i am not going to report it because i feel like social stigma social taboo so that you know anything happen and my daughter might suicide so nobody report that so this is why the government is not getting enough reports to uh, to to feel, to feel the pain that's why another question i think how to ensure the internet uh, browsing on face safe uh, uh, social media yes there are tools there are good, good tools they yeah? are google family you can use it microsoft uh, connect uh, you can use it a uh, family connect you can use it uh yes yeah, to some extent it is safe but uh, uh, don't think that these are the tools for 100 so i remember uh, i i give us uh, during one of my session i was talking to uh, the parents about this the parental control tools so what happened is uh, one of the parent was using it and uh, the, the the child was basically uh, sorry the child was basically uh, 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 you, uh, using a different method to connect and uh, uh, browsing um, in an appropriate content then parent will come back to me and say hey you told me that there is a tool and my i installed that tool and it didn't happen so uh, these are not 100% a full full proof tools um, uh, imagine of my son which is 14 year old 
uh, I cannot control him in, with these tools because he is much uh, ahead of me technologically. He knows a lot of uh, cyber uh, uh, hacking tricks than me. <laughs> okay, so so you you cannot control your children with the technology. Yes, these are good for the children, maybe under uh, twelve years or even thirteen years. But anything thirteen and above, you slowly give them the real space again, teach them overpower the internet build resilience you know they have to have a, a resilient community in order to uh, uh, in order to have this yeah so um, potentially if you ask me if you have a tool uh, yes there are tools but that's not a hundred percent full full foolproof tools Absolutely, sir. As you mentioned, uh, no, internet isn't uh, secure. Like it's not hundred percent secure. There's always a uh, you know one percent loophole everywhere. But still, we we should take that necessary precautions to you know make ourselves safeguard. Yes, sir. Uh, so, any more questions, audience? Any more questions? Okay. Let's just give another minute, so we'll see if uh, there have any other questions. I guess, uh, I guess, no more questions, sir. Okay. Uh, so thank you again, sir. Thank you once again for uh, you know sharing a lot of information with us. You know how to uh, help this society, how how we can safeguard ourselves on the internet. So it was uh, all very informative. So once again, thank you from Red Team Hacker Academy, and uh, I also like to thank uh, you from all the audience over there. So I hope uh, you made the facts clear and uh, got through them. So thank you once again, sir, and I hope uh, we could have future sessions with you as well. Cool. Thank you. Cool. Sir. Thank you very much. Thanks a lot. I'm leaving the stage. Thank you, sir.